Creation Festival, the tour happening tonight at Calvary Church in Lancaster. That being the case, there are a number of artists in town, including Will and Mark of Audio Adrenaline. Now, this band has had a huge impact on their audience across the nation and around the world over the years. They're in the studio right now. And uh, guys, thanks for joining me for the Classic Cafe. Ooh, I love the Classic Cafe. Thanks for having us, John. Yeah, Yeah, sure. we're glad to be love here. <laughs> the end of one chapter often means the, the beginning of a new chapter. So Mark and Will, I invite both of you to answer this question. What were some of the new beginnings in your lives after Audio Adrenaline? Well, you know, I, I'll take you back a little bit. We came off the road um, back in 2007, had our last show in Hawaii, did the farewell concert there in April, and um, it was largely because Mark Stewart's voice was, uh, our lead singer was, uh, sure. you know, kind of deteriorating, and we didn't want um, him to lose his voice altogether, so we decided that we, you know, God was leading us into retirement, and um, it's funny, though, you know, a rock band doesn't really set you up for a great 401k plan, but, uh, <laughs> so you still kind of got all these things going on in your mind, like, what am, what's next, and what are we supposed to do, and the funny thing is, is um, uh, Mark and I actually ended up in a church called Journey Church in Franklin, Tennessee together. And it's the first time that we had attended church together ever, you know, because when you're in a rock band, you spend all that time on the road together. When you get home, you just kind of like, you know, take off and separate. And so we ended up in the same church. We ended up in the same small group. And uh, Jamie George, the pastor there, was really speaking into our lives and kind of walking us through that after audio A time period. And we would share all these stories from the road, you know, times of triumph, times of heartache and failure and, and uh and he was like, man, I really think that, you know, people should hear these stories, you know. And so very organically, uh, we would have, uh, you know, him encourage us and kind of nurture us and say, you know, I think you have a voice and still need to be out there telling people these stories. So that's kind of how Audio Unplugged was birthed. It was um, kind of a very natural uh way that it came about but we uh you know god would would say you know that you need to you know be vulnerable and be real and share some of these tougher stories that you went through where god carried you as a band and as individuals uh through the heartache and the, and the the failures of the of your career but then also share of the triumphs and the highlights like the hands and feet project and things like that so we're on to this new thing now and uh it's been pretty amazing to see what god's doing with it well, we're doing now with Audio Unplugged, uh, we started doing these concerts and people responded to them. Um, and then we kind of wanted to take our church, our experience of our church on the road, so we started doing worship. And then that turned into us making a new record, uh, not as audio drilling, but a thing called No Hope, which is K-N-O-W, mm -hmm. Knowing Hope. And um, we, we joined forces with some pretty cool writers and some voices in Nashville, and we, and we began to make a record that has a, a few audio a remakes on it but a lot of original new worship music that we're gonna you know play in concert mark my understanding is that you have a mission outreach in haiti uh what are some of the needs that you're addressing there um we take care of uh orphans and abandoned children on the southern coast of haiti right now my mom and dad live there it's called the hands of feet project uh you can learn more about it at hands of feet project dot org dot org um, basically, we built a project where not only do we take care of orphans, um, but we invite youth groups from America or church groups to come in. Um, my mom and dad host these groups, basically to let first world people learn what it's like to become the hands and feet of Christ. So there's two real purposes, to raise up a generation of Haitian beautiful kids to know Jesus that can impact Haiti. Uh, and set them up with, you know, great skills and knowledge of the Lord, but also to encourage our generation of kids here that there's another, you know, whole third world out there that that Jesus can um, uh, really penetrate their hearts when they become vulnerable and they go on a mission trip. It changes their lives. It's just like, well, it's what happened to me in junior high school. So that's what the Hands of Feet Project is all about, and we've loved every minute of it. That's probably... One of the big reasons as well, Will didn't mention that we're doing Audio Unplugged and No Hope is to use that platform uh, to share the story of Hands of Feet. We're doing a second orphanage now in Haiti and beginning an orphanage in Nicaragua as well. Now, has your mission recovered from the storms that hit the region last year? I understand some uh, pretty ferocious hurricanes hit the area and you were affected. Yeah, we were, uh, we were pretty much... I don't. We were we weren't devastated, but we were we were about to pull the plug. We were so disheartened. Really? We were just like, oh, yeah. Lord, what's happened? Because we were buried under eight feet of rock, 
and um, my dad's 67, and he built most of it with patience by yeah, hand. Manual you know? labor, yep. And just to watch it get buried in like one day. Um, you know, you start to ask those questions like, God, are we supposed to be here? Uh, and then we realized on the flight home, my dad and I went there uh, right when it happened. And, and we were traveling back, and I remember my dad just, we were both kind of crying. He was like, you know what, though, this isn't about these these houses or these trucks that we've been able to purchase and build. It's about these 42 beautiful miracle babies, and they're still all alive. Uh, so the Hands of Feet project has to go on. And uh, so we realized that through that. But to answer your question, we've recovered. There's still a lot of cleanup left to do because there's not a lot of um, bulldozers to rent. It's really expensive, so everything has to be done by hand. But we're growing, and we're moving ahead, and we're starting another orphanage. And, you know, plants are starting to come back, and my mom's garden is coming back, mm. and all the kids are playing soccer again out on the field. So... Um, God is good and he's faithful. Yeah, you have a new album coming out. Tell us about it. Yeah, we're working on an album um, with integrity and it's a worship CD. A lot of uh, original music, maybe some worship covers and some IOA remakes. But basically it's a record about um, vulnerability and getting real with the Lord and pushing people towards authentic relationships with God and in the church and uh, there's a lot of storytelling actually on the CD as well so it's a different type of record integrity really is into it and uh, this is Jason say hey Jason hi What's Jason hey. Jason and I uh, we worked on the song together with another writer and we just really loved the chorus and we kind of tweaked it and wrote and uh, finished it and we went in the studio and recorded it. there's actually four vocalists on here okay uh, so the no hope collective is a, is a collaborative effort by different vocalists and writers making a you know, a worship CD together. You have my attention. 